Today on The Sales Life, we're going to talk about risk. <laughs> no risk it for the biscuit. Specifically, what's your relationship with risk? Do you view it as a threat or do you look at it as an opportunity? I'm fortunate because I work in sales and sales is all about taking risk. If I don't take risk, I don't eat. But if you're not in sales, you still have to take risk. And sometimes it seems like the older that we get, the less risk that we take. So I hope by the end of this episode, I can help change your relationship with risk and that you'll see that it has a lot of upside to it. And very little downside other than losing a little bit of rejection, maybe a little bit of embarrassment, but the upside, because I took those risks. Oh my God. Before we roll out with today's episode, welcome to The Sales Life. I'm your host, Marsh Spice, and I created The Sales Life because I believe the number one skill that you need in life is the ability to sell. But you don't have to be in sales to learn how to sell. I'll take the skills that I've learned in the sales profession. There's five of them. Communication, curiosity, creativity, continuous learning and action, and productive confrontation. I'll show you how I've taken those skills and applied these to every area of my life, and now you can too. So if you're trying to get back up after life has slapped you down, or you're trying to move up, because you feel like your life is kind of stalled out. If you want to have more, do more, be more, then you're going to have to learn to sell more. I'm so grateful that you're back here with me. And hey, this is your first time here. Welcome to The Sales Life. We're going to get you in, get you out, and get you on with your life and give you something that you can apply right now to your life. And if you've been here a time or 10, welcome back. I'm so grateful that you're here. You have made The Sales Life a top 3% podcast in the world. There's 5 million podcasts out there and you have contributed and helped grow the show. But we're not done. We're trying to get to the top 100, number 53 to be exact. And the only way we can do that is with your help. A couple of different things if you could help support the show. Number one, if there's an idea or thought that you hear on today's episode, Share it on your socials with the hashtag of TSL and be sure and tag me in it so that way I can show you some love on it. And if you would take a minute to rate and review the show, the rating is the stars that shows your support, but the review are your words. And with millions of podcasts to choose from out there, and the first thing people go to when they're considering a podcast is what others say about it. If you would just take a quick minute and leave a nice review, that way we can help boost the show up just a quick announcement too on october 3rd the sales life makes five years old and to celebrate i've got my guy alan stein jr coming on to talk about his new book sustain your game how to beat stress stagnation and burnout all three things that we can relate to i love this conversation that we had and i can't wait to share it with you so let's roll out with today's episode and let's talk about risk what's your relationship with risk Risk is safe. This is what I want you to know. Risk is safe. Safe is risk. It's the worst thing you can do. And as we get older, we tend to pull back a little bit. We get out of school or we take on a job and we stop taking risk. But taking risk is one of the safest things you can do because it's going to do a couple of things. It's going to create options. It's going to give you valuable lessons, grit, confidence, discipline. Momentum, and of course, <laughs> results. <laughs> when you look at it, man, there's very little downside. Aside from the emotional aspect of taking risk, there's not much downside to it. And there's tremendous upside. So I'm going to break down the upside, the benefits to taking these risks. So that way you'll begin to change your relationship with it, start taking more of them, and create these options. But then also behind the scenes, so much more benefits that people don't even consider. See, when you're being safe, you're being selective. You have this sniper mentality, this one shot, one kill mentality. So when you start being real selective, you don't know what you have. You don't know what's available. You're just using your judgment and your emotions and your past. And you're saying, hmm. I think I'm going to try this. No, just don't even try to negotiate with yourself on that. Just take the risk because see, taking risk is a statistical approach to what you do. 
And if I have more numbers, then I create more options and I create more lessons and strengthen my grit, my confidence, my discipline, my momentum, all that. See it happen all the time with salespeople. When salespeople first get into the business, it's peace, love, and soul. They love everybody. Everybody's an opportunity. They believe every person's going to buy from them. And if they don't buy today, that's okay. They'll be back. And they believe that. But then as the rejection mounts up, they start being very selective. And they start judging, oh, is this, is this worth my time or not? So then they start working from a process of elimination. Instead of building a relationship, they're asking questions to eliminate what they do or don't have. And this is how they end up out of the business. See, when you don't take risk and when you're being selective, you're going to be poor in mind, body, soul, spirit, relationships, finances, just an overall piss poor life. Because it's the risk that you take and the lessons that you gain it's what's going to take you to where you want to be. You can't get there without taking risk. I mean, you think if I was climbing a mountain, that doesn't carry risk? Of course it does. Mountains don't have ladders on them. <laughs> they have little bitty leverages, right? Ridges. And so you reach out and you got to stretch and you got to feel to make sure it's, it's kind of solid. And then you pull up. You, you don't know for certain. And sometimes, man, you put all your weight into it and you, you feel, oh, I might have to re-strategize this a little bit. But that's all right. You took the risk. You reached out. You grabbed it. And then you make the adjustments. That's what it is, man. You're, you're climbing the mountain of life. You're trying to get to the summit of success. The only way that you're going to get there is by taking risk. Entrepreneurs, same thing like salespeople. I talk to entrepreneurs all the time. And they're looking for the big whale, the one shot, one kill kind of guy. But let me tell you something about this. If you go for this one big account and you think, oh, if I can land this account, it'll pay for everything. You're setting yourself up for massive defeat because you're putting all your eggs in this one basket. And what's going to happen is, is all the other smaller accounts that you had, because you're trying to service this one big account, you let the smaller ones go this bigger account starts making more demands on you and, and you've got to offer additional concessions and you've got to hire more people to service this one account. And because of competition, they start driving you and squeezing you on a price and you end up out of the business. You got to take the risk, write this on your mirror, put it on a post-it note on your dashboard. Risk is safe. Safe is risk and follow that every day and you'll be just fine. Sales is a numbers game, but life too is a numbers game. And you need more numbers. Stop judging what you do or don't have. Start taking more risk. Start reaching out there for more. Let me give you an example. Imagine that I just give you the bucket and I only say, fill the bucket and come see me at the end of the month. You don't know why. I don't give you any other reason other than make that one demand. There's two types of people in this scenario. One person who views risk as an opportunity, they fill the bucket. As a matter of fact, they come back to him and say, hey, I need another bucket because I'm filling it. But then you have the other person who's trying to be safe and selective. They just put four or five things in that bucket. At the end of the month, the one who took risk and the one who was safe, both of them come with their buckets. And I tell them both. I'm going to pay you for everything that's in that bucket. Good opportunities, bad opportunities, dead opportunities, doesn't matter. I'm going to pay you well for everything that's in that bucket. The one who took the risk and filled up multiple buckets is about to get paid. And then the one who was trying to be safe and dumps out four or five things on the ground, it looks at me and it's like, I didn't know. It's because you were being selective. And I can only pay you on four or five things versus the 50 things in this other guy's bucket. See, here's the thing about opportunities. You can't look at opportunities one-to-one. -one. You have to look at them more so as a bucket. And so at the beginning of the month, you imagine your bucket. And I put 50 things in that bucket. Out of that 50, 
25 of them are hot. Out of that 25 hot ones, 15 of them go through. Done deal. And then there's 10 left. And the 10 that were hot, five of them fall out. They're not qualified. The other five are hot, but not quite ready. All right? So that's half of them. The other 25, 10 of them are warm. The other 15 fall out. Of those 10 warm, going into the next month, I've got five that were hot, but not quite ready. I've got 10 that are warm. I just need to follow up on. And then I'm going to put another 50 in there for this month. Dude, you keep doing that month after month, you're going to need some backup. You're going to need other people to help you with all of these opportunities. This is how you keep your pipeline full. It's because you're going into your month with a big bucket. And so I don't attach any emotions to it. I just say, hey, it's just part of the bucket. So when people try to, oh, man, you spent all that time on that last, you, you did all that. Yeah, it's just part of the bucket. And that's how you kill it. It's, they're on my bucket list. Put them in there. Put them in there. Put them in there. If you're in sales, put them in there. You make a speech, put them in there. You make another podcast episode, put them in there. You make a, a couple of demos, put them in there. You show the big houses and the small houses and the rental, put them in there. You canvas the neighborhood for investments, put them in there. They're just part of the bucket. I just keep adding to it. And they're going to shake out the way they need to shake out. I just got to do my part. So see how that creates the opportunity? But out of those opportunities are so many valuable lessons. Oh my God. Because each single opportunity that you have carries with it four or five lessons, experiences. When you break each one of these down, how well did you communicate? Did you ask questions? Did you gain a better understanding? Did you counter with additional perspectives? Did you follow up? That's that one opportunity. And look at all of the benefits that you have and the lessons that you can gain from that one. So then if you have 50, that's 250, a minimum of 250 lessons in one month. Oh my God. You follow this, man, you're going to be a genius. People are going to know how you do it. Just work a bucket. Safe is risk. Risk is safe. So you've created options. You're gaining valuable lessons. And because you're following up, now you got that grit. Grit is that sandpaper mentality, not that smooth paper. Smooth paper is you take the no at face value. You reach out. They say no. Okay. But you got to understand, man, with the, when you have grit and that sandpaper mentality, this is when you start to change your relationship that sometimes the N-O that you hear is actually a K-N-O-W, a no in reality. So sometimes they don't know enough to make a decision to move forward. But because of that grit, you're able to sand those initial objections and fears. It's not a saw, it's sand. So you're not sawing right through it, just trying to get right to it. Some of these opportunities, as you follow up, you got to sand away at it. It's a process and you strip away the residue of these initial objections and fears. You keep sanding on it and following up because you stayed with it and you kept sanding. You're able to uncover the root fear and concern and objection, address it and be able to help them. Here's the thing about following up. If you don't follow up, you're doing people a disservice. You really are. And what you're really saying when you don't follow up, what you're really saying is, I don't believe enough in the level of service that I have to offer. I had a guy tell me yesterday, he said, Marsh, if I don't follow up, I feel like I'm screwing a customer because I know what I can do. I know the level of service I can provide. And if I don't follow up and get through to them on that, I've screwed them. And I've contributed to them making a bad decision because I wasn't thorough in what I did. Can I make someone do business with me? No. Can I influence it? Absolutely. All I'm here to do is give you all the possible options so that way you can make the best decision. It's what you're here to do. Whatever field that you're in, whether you're a teacher, whether you're an entrepreneur, whether you're a salesperson, all you're doing is you're creating options and it's up to them to determine which option they're gonna go with. You do your part. You let them do theirs. Now, because you take risk, 
it creates discipline too. And discipline means I don't fade to my feelings. I don't put this extra narrative on it. I keep a commitment to myself. Taking risks also creates confidence. Confidence is earned, is not inherited. No one can give you confidence. You can only earn it. And because you create options and you gain valuable lessons and you follow up and you've got grit and discipline, this is what makes you walk with a different swag. You've got that confidence. You've got that internal hum. And you've got so much momentum built that you're unstoppable. Risk is safe. Safe is risk. Take the risk. There's so many upsides to this. If you'll tap into this idea and say, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the leap. I'm going to take this risk day after day after day. You'll create the options, the experience, the discipline, the grit, the confidence, the momentum. It's all opportunity, all upside, and no downside. So what's your relationship with risk? <laughs> now that you've heard it, what are you going to do better? How are you going to take risk forward into your week? Let me hear from you. Go to marshbice.com. That's M-A-R-S-H-B-U-I-C-E. In the bottom right is a mic from you to me. Let me hear from you. I'd love to hear your feedback. Also share your favorite takeaway from today's episode with the hashtag TSL. Be sure and tag me in it so I can show you some love. Subscribe. Don't forget to rate and review the show. The stars show you love. Your review shows your support. I'm giving you all I got. Remember the greatest sale that you will ever make is to sell you on you because you're more than enough. Stay amazing. Stay in the sales life.